Hey guys, in the earlier section we talked about command injection attack. So we were able to inject a malicious command over here and along with um, pinging the host we were able to extract contents of certain privileged files like as shown on the screen here. Right Now we are going to extend the same attack uh, uh, you know so that we have a persistent backdoor from another attacking machine. So how we are going to do that is we're going to start a netcat session on the victim machine right and we will also have a netcat session on the attacking machine and <clears throat> the user will be able to run any command the attacker will be able to run any command on his machine and they will be executed on the victim and the data and the output will be sent back to the attacker right a simple command will be used for this attack as shown on the screen the first part is the IP address followed by a semicolon as similar to the earlier attacks right the next part is the actual attack attacking command right so um, let me let me take you through this right so as you see we are using a pipe over here is the a, a pipe is created that provides uh, inter-process communication um, you know that allows multiple readers and writers to communicate with each other right <clears throat> it's it's like a virtual glue you know that serves as input output communications between an interactive shell and netcat right so that's the pipe part then we have a interactive shell right uh, over here which is attached to the pipe and that's basically sent as output to the netcat listener which is listening on this port right the output of the netcat session is again now uh, fed to the fed as input to the pipe right and this pipe um, and whatever is fed that in turn becomes you know the input to the shell because you know we are basically you know uh, executing the pipe over here using the shell command so uh, this is a simple exploit command which we are using so let me take this command and paste it down here right so let me run this so as you see uh, the tab starts loading and it will remain like this throughout the exploit now let me jump onto a attacking machine which is a Kali Linux in this case right and now let me open the netcat session right the netcat session being nc192.168.47.1 uh, if I'm not wrong if that's the IP address yes and the port being uh, 4.4 so we basically um, connected to the netcat session which we have maliciously injected on our victim machine so we on the attacking machine we are basically connecting to the same netcat session and uh, we should now have the access to the shell of the victim machine right so let's uh, run some commands right who am i yep so i have the privileges of the user called apache right let me get the host name fedora 14 exactly right the victim machine is basically a fedora machine right some more details uh, maybe let's do a cat to the etc word file yes we are able to get those details as well isn't that great so we now have a continuous backdoor on my attacking machine and i can execute as in when you know i i i need so as, as an attacker that's that's a pretty that's pretty handy for him so we have established a persistent access for the attacker of the victim machine right so that was using netcat now let's try to you know extend the same thing using metasploit metasploit as you guys know is a very powerful framework for doing any kind of exploits right so let's uh, let's let's try to use that okay right so let me fire up the msf console here okay, let me clear my screen yes. yeah so as you see uh, it's still loading over here maybe i will restart this again let me stop this process 
right? So for this attack again, we are going to use the same command which I showed earlier, where we are going to have a, a netcat session running. So let me resubmit it, right? Great. So I have a MSF console over here. Now we need to know which payload, what kind of payload are we using here? What kind of an exploit are we using? So we are going to use something called as a multi-handler. Right, so you can start a handler with Metasploit at any time. This is useful when you are executing a backdoor in a victim's machine and you need to connect back to take control, right? That's uh, handy. Now we need to set the payload. So let's use a TCP payload, right? So yeah, that's a TCP payload. Now we need to set, uh, you know, the IP address of the victim machine. So we're going to use set our host, right? We're going to use the IP address, which is 192.168.43.138. Great. Yes. And I think we are all ready to launch our exploit. Let's launch it. Okay. I think, uh, oh, there is a typo over here. It should have been our host. Okay, let's, yeah. And I have to fire the MSF console again, sorry. Okay, then we are gonna use multi-handler. and we set the payload now we're going to set our post that was a typo earlier 168.43.138 great now the arrow is set now let me launch the exploit awesome looks like we already have the access who am i yes I ran who am I and I got Apache to be the user, right? Now we can do great things. Let's uh, probably see the directory of the web server, right? That should be fun. Let's see what's there in the directory of the web server. So the directory of the web server being where uh, it's, it's in this folder. And uh, as you can see here, right? there's a config directory wow that's interesting configs are the places where you actually you know get the passwords for a lot of a uh, lot of things which they use like for example databases so let's do that let's uh, yeah so let's go inside the config directory you see that there is a config file which is readable Wow, okay, that's interesting. So now that we have a readable file, let's go and read it. Who knows, we might ponder on some passwords which can be used for our attack. Okay, I think that should have been cat. Okay, that's a mistake. Whoa, so we opened up uh, the config file and we see that we have a database password readily available for us over here Okay, now that we have the database password We can actually go and dump the database, you know and look at the contents of the database as well Right, so let's do that okay. I think that's just To that great so we use the password which we obtained earlier and we are running a command show databases and these are the databases which are available right let's use this database right there might be something interesting on that so let's do that So 
we run the command and we see that there are some tables so we have bunch of tables over here so <coughs> we, we have let's I think the table called users might be of good interest for us so let's go and see what's there in this particular table right great so great so we see this table and we see that there are very interesting fields you have the first name last name then there is like the username password pretty interesting let me go and dump the entire table now let's see if we can do that great I think we have it let's expand this look we are able to we, we obtained the contents of the table for example the name you know the password you know you can probably use certain password cracking tools later to actually you know decipher these passwords so we have successfully you know exploited this particular web server and extracted the contents of you know, the database so I think that's pretty evident uh, how powerful the command injection uh, attack could be right um, all right uh, I'll be back again with some more interesting uh, things to play around uh, and we'll keep you guys updated ciao bye